Jonathan Bailey from Second Gate Advisory, come on up. And we have Mark McKenzie Spark, come on up. Now, if you, if you, if you want to know why I'm here right now, I'm here to announce the Pizza Pets airdrop info. So, if, it, if that interests you, what you need to do, I talked about the Ordinal's passport earlier. This passport, if you have not gotten it yet, you want to grab this. This is going to make you eligible for the Pizza Ninja organized and, and pioneered Pizza Pets airdrop. We are going to notify all passport holders that you can fill out your email, your Ordinal's address, and you can provide even your EVM address for other airdrops that are planned. And you're going to be getting a tons and tons of airdrops that are going to be coming through as part of this initiative, including the most important Pizza Pets airdrop. With that, I'm going to hand it to the panelists and the mods here. Mark. So Mark. here you go, Mark. Troy. Mark. And Mark. give them a big hand, Mark. please, guys. Mark. You can block Mark. 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 Yeah. Mark. Like Mark what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Isn't that unclear, right? What's up, everybody? Please shut the fuck up. Please shut the fuck up, please. Thank you. Oh, we're sitting in the wrong places. All right, let's go here. We're about to start. Do we have to sit in the right places? No, fuck that. So I'm a big nobody. My name is Turhan Troy Kalak. And uh, we're here with Mark McKenzie, founder of Spark. Mark McKenzie's right there. And this is Nichelle and Nick Odio from Ferrum Network. Right? All right. And this is Brandon Bailey, otherwise known as BZ, from Second Gate, Second Gate Advisory. It would be great if that section would please SFTU. It's just, uh, you know, a little difficult, a little noise pollution. Anyway, let's get right to it. So, Nick, Nichelle, who wants to talk about the Ferrum Network? Let's dive in. Yeah, let's go. Hey everybody, thanks so much for having us. Uh, my name is Nick Odio, Chief Growth Officer over at Ferrum Network. Ferrum Network uh, at its core is an interoperability protocol, but you know when you say that it kind of sounds boring, so how do you make that tangible, right? Ferrum is Latin for iron. Iron is the peri on the peri periodic table of elements. It is the element that bonds to the most amount of elements with the least amount of friction. That's why we call ourselves Ferrum because we're an interoperability protocol. But not just connecting networks to deploy decentralized applications on multiple chains, but also bridging this physical and digital world through immersive experiences, which is what we're doing here at the Ordinals Conference. Telling the story of crypto through art, through creation, through Ordinals on Bitcoin. Making people feel something, right? How do we connect this physical and digital world to be able to relay the message and tell our story? And so. Ferrum, at its core, interoperability protocol, but we are also networking all these different projects. I don't know if you've noticed the Ordinal stage, Ordinal's Lounge downstairs. It's actually the Ferrum Lounge, but we decided to call it the Ordinal's Lounge because we wanted to give a platform to all these different amazing creators, projects, and artists to be able to showcase their talents and what they're doing because that's the spirit of it all, right? Collaboration over competition, and that's what we're here for. We're here to push barriers of mass adoption, break them down, and we're here to, uh, to empower everyone else and build this shit together. So that's what we're up to. Build this shit together. <laughs> Building something out of nothing. Nichelle, do you want to... That was really nice, I have to say. Nice shirt, by the way. Let's give it a round of applause for his shirt. And uh, also, I want to give a round of applause for uh, Trevor and the Pizza Ninja team and every ordinal MFer that put this thing together for us that made us buy tickets to fly across the world to talk about ordinals and, and culture and, and, uh, and all that stuff. Nichelle, do you want to add anything that might be of use to what uh, this gentleman just splayed for, for your company? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Nichelle. I'm the EVP of Operations at Ferrum Network. Um, I've been in this space since, I guess, 2017. It's hard to build off of what Nick just laid down for everyone because that it, he's so descriptive and artistic in the way that he likes to explain things. Um, but you know the sentiment that Nick put across and a lot of the ethos as to why we're at this com conference. And um, to let everyone know too, uh, you know, we're newer in the Bitcoin space. Uh, we've been an EVM project for a very long time. Nick really laid the land in regards to um, the technology that our company builds to be interoperable. Um, but we're really looking to bridge that interoperability from 
the space that we've been living in for years since we really started in 2018 into this BTC space. So it's really exciting what we're doing. You know, when I think about where our company started, we started in the bear market and we've been building ever since. And like many projects, our project has grown and it's concatenated many times. You know, we've took on many team members and then we've had to bring it down in bear markets and then we're ramping back up. I think right now we're about 40 people. And um, when we decided to be here and be in this space and be in this conference and Nick mentioned our lounge downstairs and we really wanted to bring an ethos of collaboration. Um, if you have a chance to go down there, make sure you pick up a passport. I know Taha, our um, CTO, just mentioned and highlighted that for everyone. It is an immersive journey, and we want to make sure that what we're bringing to the stage, and um, one of the speeches earlier had Sovereign as a guest, and he really spoke really well about it, about it needs to have emotion behind it. You know, we're all here to understand and enjoy the technology, but what does it make you feel? And a lot of what we're really encompassing and focused on right now is the curation of that. You know, we're working with a lot of artists in the space, in the ordinal space. We're working with um, Leo Colliard, for example, and his runestone and what that project looks like and the emotion that's around it. So it's very new for us, too, to be in this space and grow with everyone and learn from everyone. Um, but I think that hopefully encapsulates kind of the, the rock and the foundation of Ferrum, and then also where we're growing and where we're looking to be in the future. That was, I have to say, that was a well-balanced duo right there. So it wasn't like he upstaged you, I have to say. That was very fantastic. Um, BZ, Brandon, tell your story, man. What's going on? What, 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 what's your, what's your uh, what's Second Gate Advisory about? Did you want to like feed us a layup that leads us to there? I'll For give sure. you the floor. Go ahead. For sure. So, uh, Second Gate Advisory, I'm a co founder. Uh, it's a company that advises Bitcoin mining companies on strategy, um, as well as helping them with uh, strategic sort of um, financial initiatives, so acquisitions, dispositions, things like that. Uh, prior to co founding Second Gate Advisory, I was a VP on the mining team at Galaxy. And um, while at Galaxy, I wrote some research on ordinals. Naturally, being a, a Bitcoin miner, you know, I'm very interested in the ordinals uh, sort of ecosystem and runes naturally for the transaction fees and transaction activity. And so that's what initially got me going down the rabbit hole. Um, I've been around in ordinals ever since January of 2023. Um, big fan of a lot of the early inscriptions and the provenance of early inscriptions and uh, created the Sub1K Twitter account and created various collection reports for some of those early inscription projects. Um, I've done a couple other initiatives in the space, maybe like Node Monkey Appraiser is something I created. Maybe you've seen that, maybe you haven't. Um, but ordinals in this, this space is a, a really big hobby for me. And its connection with the mining ecosystem all sort of circles back to transaction fees. And as we have more L2s, new um, sort of activity happening on Bitcoin, all of that is important for miners. And a lot of what we're doing at Second Gate is also helping miners understand ordinals, the ordinals ecosystem, runes, what's happening with L2s, what's happening with a lot of this new activity, and how it, act and how it ultimately will impact their business or how it creates new opportunities you know, for miners and mining pools. So that's a lot of what I've been focused on more recently. I have to, I just remembered in the beginning part of your speech, that's why I know you. I remember in Amsterdam speaking on stage, I was super impressed then, I'm super impressed now. Sub K, Discord group, that, that's where it is. So I thought you were this actor that I used to work with back in the day. So anyway, so anyway, thanks for, thanks for that. Um, Mark. <laughs> Hard to follow such a great panel, so thanks for having me here. Of course, Mark, please. So I'm Mark McKenzie. I'm one of the co-founders at Spark, and we build solutions to enable anyone to pay for anything with crypto. So we take crypto primitives and a payments orchestration framework to enable merchants to accept crypto when they don't want crypto, and a lot of merchants do not want crypto, and we enable consumers to pay for anything with any crypto. So you know you don't want to go and load a card with, say, crypto.com, or you don't want to off-ramp. So really, we believe that everyone inside the crypto ecosystem right now wants to remain within the crypto ecosystem. So we're building solutions to enable that to happen. That was pretty quick, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for like, uh, keeping it short, because now I have to work. 
I appreciate that. Well, you did tell me before the panel that don't worry, <laughs> I can carry this. I've yeah, got yeah. this. So was, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you guys. So I guess I'll go down the horn. Like, what are the um? So would you say that immersive experiences is, is the the leading thing that you guys do at Ferrum? Because when I was reading, it was a, a lot of other things. Yeah, no, that's not the leading thing that we do with Ferrum, but we do think that that's the best way to tell the story, right? And I think we've gotten to this point, with Bitcoin especially, where we haven't had the ability to tell stories. Because as um, someone so poignantly pointed out on the last, not last panel, the panel before that, I think it was Shishi from uh, Build on Bitcoin, she mentioned that Bitcoin as a financial tool, like as a means of transactional uh, or as a store of value wasn't quite enough. It wasn't enough to like gain mass adoption. It wasn't enough to help people understand what the true power of Bitcoin is. And we're very lucky to be in a position now with Bitcoin and Web3 in general where we're able to build the application layer on top of networks like Bitcoin, right? And especially with Bitcoin because it took so long to get there and I think that could be argued a couple ways. It's like are we here now because of smart contracts and Ethereum and uh, other EVM layers or other smart contract platforms? Or did it take us this long to get here because of them? So one could say, argue that it was the catalyst. One could argue that it was a hindrance. But regardless, we're here. And Bitcoin is enabling some very incredible things right now to tell that kind of story. And so when you ask, is Ferrum, does the, do they lead with immersive experiences? No, we don't, but we're lucky enough now to be able to tell our story about what interoperability is, something that may be bland to other people or something hard to digest, and we're able to tell that through curation and artists and what people are doing that actually evoke emotions in people. And you know, with Ordinal's Passport, this is education through immersive experiences, and people are, like, it's clicking with people when you talk to them about it. It's like, all right, we've got a Magisat ball pool down there where there's a bunch of orange balls in a, in a ball pit, but there's other different colored balls that represent rare sats. It's like, go find the rare sat, and now like you, you hold this rare sat, but there could be someone, I think we we're gonna get water guns tomorrow, hopefully, where someone could be sniping you from like the outside the ball pit, and it's like a mempool <laughs> sniper, right? So it's like, okay, now this is a tangible thing that we can all understand, right? And that's not possible without being able to build applications. Because when it's just a network, when it's just transactional, there's not really something like bitmaps or something to create something spatial or physical or like representative to help us understand these things, right? So um, that's, uh, we're, we're lucky to be building in a time like we are now, um, where we can tell those stories through these immersive experiences and things. But at its core, Bitcoin is technology, right? We just got to figure out a way to tell the story. That's fantastic. And it's an L1, right? I mean. It yeah, it's an interoperable L1. It's a multi-chain messaging engine. We're trying to bring all of that consensus back to Bitcoin because that's the, you know, the reason we're all here and it's the most decentralized and the most secure. And so we want to turn every other layer out there into an L2 for, for Bitcoin and bring the consensus back to Bitcoin. That's fantastic. So he's, he's explained the way he's educating. You know, I'm just curious for you two, how are you doing mass education and, and possible content uh, to not just get people like this in a room, but just like broadcasting, like simplistically, like, like how are you guys doing that to, to, to educate what you're building to a larger room than this? Sure, I'm, I'm happy to start. So I think um, the, the one thing that I find most helpful with ordinals is sort of explaining it from the perspective of it being this cultural layer on Bitcoin. I think to your point, you know, narratives really drive our ecosystem. Narratives are what drive Bitcoin, crypto as a whole. I think the store value narrative, the payments narrative specifically for Bitcoin was very instrumental in helping boot, like bootstrap early Bitcoin adoption. Um, but to some extent, you know, you, you could argue that we're running up to sort of like a, a plateau with that narrative or in terms of how many new people it's bringing into the ecosystem. Um, I think it's still a very strong and important narrative, but I see things like runes or the ability to expand the utility or what you can do on Bitcoin as a way to bring in new users, right? So not everybody understands the financial argument for Bitcoin or even cares, but Ordinals offers a different way to approach a person and explain why Bitcoin is interesting, 
or maybe why they should get involved in a way that they understand, in a way that kind of meets them at their level. And so I, I see it as a, a great way to continue to spread the virus, if you will, um, but do it in a way that can resonate with a different demographic of people or a set of people that may care about it for a different set of reasons. I don't think that the two narratives need to compete. It's sort of this idea of Bitcoin can be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a store of value, great. If you want it to be sort of this cultural layer or a medium for, in which you express yourself, fantastic. But I think it's about it continuing to expand um, you know, the adoption of Bitcoin and explain it to people that it can really represent a myriad of different things for people. You, he you heard it here first. Bitcoin is a virus. So please buy more. Show of hands, who has Bitcoin in their wallets? You could lie, P please don't. All right, okay, I'm gonna need you guys to go just buy. Um, I mean, seriously, like buy the virus and we'll, we'll find the cure. Uh, Mark, go ahead, buddy. If you I think one of the things we all misunderstand is just how complex crypto is. Um, I like to tell a little story of when I onboarded one of my friends in 2021. He wanted to buy an NFT on Ethereum and he gave me a call and he said, hey, I've got my Bitcoin on my Coinbase. I'm ready to buy this NFT. And I had to explain to him, well, you need Ether, not Bitcoin. He's like, cool, I've swapped that. Oh, now you need MetaMask. He's like, what's MetaMask? Like, what's a secret key? It's really complicated and it's really confusing. And you're now seeing a plethora of startups doing wallet abstraction, making it really simple. So I think education is important, but we have a choice to make, and I think it depends on what DAP or what application you're building. You even, you even need to say, okay, this is really fucking complex, and I know my user is going to struggle if they're new to crypto, at which point just go balls deep and just have base support for all the crypto primitives, or you need to say I'm abstracting away all of the complexity. All that abstraction, I'm hiding the blockchain, whether you're a game or you're building something that ultimately the user doesn't care about. It just depends on what application you're building. And I disagree with a lot of people who say, like abstraction's bad, hiding the blockchain is bad. I think it's case by case, and you just need to be quite pragmatic in, in what you approach. Fantastic. Now, we're in a highly, you know, we're in growth tech every minute of the day. We're getting our hair blown back. Sometimes we're blowing people's hair back with what we're learning and building and creating. In this competitive world, what sets Ferrum, Second Gate Advisory, and mining, what you're doing, and uh, spark from the rest. And is that your aim? Or is it just to just kill it? So like, I'm curious. Yeah, um, you know, actually, Nichelle, I think this would be, she, she, Nichelle is an expert in building teams. And I want her to speak to this a little bit because uh, I answered the last one. I want her to speak to this because she's an expert in this and why building teams that work their asses off is such a crucial component in this question. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> we both thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So when I, you know, in regards to my career and my experience and a lot of my experience at Ferrum, you know, when we started, we were, uh, you know, it started from two people and now we're over 40. And, you know, when I look at, um, it, it sounds, you know, like boring business talk, um, but scaling teams is, is a thing in, in Bitcoin. It's a thing in blockchain. It's something that's required. And you know, Nick touched on this earlier when we really need to focus on collaboration over competitiveness. Um, you know, some of the people that we've met in this space, whether we're talking about the musicians, the artists, um, the other projects in the space, you know, there have been numerous um, areas where the technology is enabling new things to happen in this space, especially um, you know, both of you just mentioned around artists. And I've absolutely talked to people who are, don't think it has a place, you know, that it is more, should be more rigid, should be more just strictly transactional. Um, but, you know, there, there are pathways that are open, but in order to make all of these things happen, you need people to show up and have the right attitude. And when, you know, when we first um, started the project, uh, we wanted to come up with a really fun name for our division. You remember? So we decided to name it GSD. And uh, maybe most of you guys know what that means, but it means get shit done. And we just use that acronym as much as possible. And that was our call of every morning of how do we get shit done? 
So, you know, at Ferrum Network even being here, we just decided 15 days ago we wanted to be at this conference. And the massive lounge that's below us is put together in 15 days. And the collaboration with, um, with Pizza Ninjas, with Seize Control, like, yes, every single one of our teammates that has showed up today has slept maybe an hour in the last two days. Get every, shit done, guys. No more, sleep. No sleep. GSD. But more importantly, our devs who are not here today have not slept even an hour in the last 48 hours because we are getting shit done. You know, we want to have that energy, that excitement of building something and what can we do and putting minds together and collaboration. You know, the whole um, being of Ferrum, you know, being at this conference started in a, in a six hour conference um, that we, in a conference room at a hotel in Hong Kong when we le left the last conference. And that is what I love about this space, you know, and the collaboration, the excitement that you can bring, whether it's building technology for interoperability, um, whether you're educating for minors, you know, whatever it may be, um, the taste of poison that you like for your virus, whatever it is, um, that's what gets me up in the day and that is what builds truly teams that produce and bring value to the ecosystem. Thank you. Go ahead. I, I want to add to that too because like that was like exactly the essence of, of Ferrum, right? And like what we're doing here. Because when your back's against the wall and you have a limited amount of time to build something, that's when the best shit happens, right? Pressure cooker situations, right? Makes diamonds. Pressure makes diamonds. We had 15 days to do this. And we're like, all right, it's like make or break. Let's do this. And so everyone showed up and showed out. And when you like kind of take a step back and you look at Web3 in general, like we're in a race against time, against fiat and this collapsing global economy. And we all need to have this mindset where it's like build, build, build. We've got a limited amount of time to do this. We need to approach every day like we have two weeks to build the coolest shit ever. We need to like understand that the, like time is against us and we've got to do this fast. We've got to wake up every day stoked to build. We've got to keep building as if we do have a super significant tight deadline. So um, I think if we all wake up every day and we have that approach, where it's like, yeah, like we have to do this. It's now or never. Like we're gonna we're gonna make diamonds, you know, and diamond hands. Yeah, and diamonds are a uh, girl's best friend, you know. So th these are fantastic answers. Um, BZ, what's up? I would say. Um just to kind of chime in with, with what you guys were alluding to, uh, specifically with the type of mining clients that we work with, it's really what, what makes us excited is the more open-minded clients, I would say at the end of the day, right? The one thing that I really love about this ecosystem, ordinals, runes, the people that are a part of this community, is the eagerness and excitement to just build, to share ideas, to try to push boundaries. I think that um, in, in certain Bitcoin spaces, you know, that isn't quite as appreciated as much. And so a lot of the conversations that we have are about helping people sort of better understand what's actually going on here and sharing these stories about what people are trying to build, what they're trying to achieve, how it works, and sort of trying to bridge the gap to say, here's why this could matter for you, or here's why this could be interesting to your, your business. Even if you're in mining, and even if you don't ever have anything to do with ordinals, it's still important for you to understand what's happening. And um, one of the ways in which that can manifest itself, just to give you some concrete examples, is with mining pools, uh, there are a few that are including rare sats as a part of the payout scheme. And so they'll separate out the rare sat, they could sell it um, on an exchange, or maybe they have a, a partner, and they'll take the proceeds with that and provide it back to the miners that are participating in that pool. So now it becomes an extra source of revenue and that can be a new way that you could uh, differentiate your business from other mining pools. Uh, another example is with hash rate derivatives, which is a sort of an emerging sort of space. But when you think about why would someone want to go long hash rate, right? Um, with the fee volatility that has come from things like runes and BRC20s over the past 12 to 18 months, you can, instead of you know, maybe buying uh, physical infrastructure or buying an ASIC, you can basically speculate on hash rate, right? So as transaction fees go up, mining economics improve, and you can buy these hash rate futures or forwards, which are, tend to be between one month and six month contracts, but you can trade that market now. It's a much more fascinating market to trade when you have 
volatility or transaction fee volatility. So this is just one new example that's sort of an emerging opportunity on account of sort of what's happening in this space and why you should care even if you don't ever buy a JPEG, even if you aren't building an L2, you should still want to understand what's happening. And for us, it's a lot about just bridging that gap and helping say, here's why you should care, here's what you should focus on and why. Yeah, it, it, it seems like when there's a, I wouldn't call runes a problem at all, but when it enters a new sector, it seems like there's a, a second ordinal sector, even though they're built on top of ordinals to trade in, which is kind of flatten the market, but yet here you have a solution or an opportunity to be able to trade with hash rate futures and, and what you were just talking about. Mark, what sets y'all apart or in this competitive world and what you're doing? Because I fucking love it. The, the, because I was reading your website and the hosting, it, it seems very Web2 related in nomenclature, in verbiage for Web3 new, newbies to understand what you're doing here. But uh, yeah, go ahead. I think one of the reasons for that is crypto isn't new, right? Bitcoin is over a decade old, Ethereum is six, seven years old. And the blockchain is easily the most superior payments network if you use the primitives in the right way. There is no better way to send money across borders than using a blockchain. But you can pick your favorite merchant, go to their website, go to checkout, and you won't see crypto there. It's very rare that you'll see crypto availed as a payments option for any goods or services outside of crypto. I think most people who've used crypto for payment, it's for an NFT or for merchandise for an NFT project. So it isn't used. Um, so our approach was to take a step back and say, well, why is that? And it's because it's a very difficult problem to solve. The crypto ecosystem isn't built for a payments network. The primitives are totally different. So our approach was to have full interoperability with Web2 payment systems. So that if you're a merchant, you don't have to change anything that you're doing. You can use the same MOR, the same taxation, reporting, reconciliation, and you can accept crypto, whether it's Bitcoin, USDC, Solana, and change absolutely nothing. Fantastic. So I'm going to end it here with uh, one final question for everybody. Since we're in Bitcoin, since we're in ordinals, what are you buying? What are you collecting? Please. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. More Bitcoin. <laughs> More Bitcoin? All right. No, but seriously, like, um, like Nichelle mentioned, like the Bitcoin ecosystem is, is new for us. And uh, when we saw this opportunity to really bring it back to its genesis like, and, and create this interoperability infrastructure that directs everything back to Bitcoin, it became very clear to us why this is necessary. Because Bitcoin, it's the best, right? And so now that we have this opportunity to build things, like I mentioned earlier, on Bitcoin, I, I really think that this is going to be the narrative for the next bull run. And I really think that the whole, you know, whether it's, you know, runes, BRC20, um, you know, any sort of inscriptions, rare stats, like, it's all taking off. And I think people are really going to start to get it. I think there's a little bit of a barrier with like um, uh, user experience and stuff, which is you know why we're here to kind of help bring people over to this ecosystem. But I see it happening, and so what am I investing in right now? I'm going like heavy on the Bitcoin ecosystem. There's a lot of really good projects here representing ordinals, and uh, man, like I'm gonna I'm gonna be getting a lot more new bags after this conference. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. A lot of projects here. Yeah. You're, you're hearing what he's buying, guys. <laughs> Pay attention, Michelle. So I would say my strategy um, just before the happening really shifted heavily to runes. I am like 24 hours a day. If I'm awake, I am in some Discord. I'm trying to understand, trying to learn more. What can I invest in? What makes sense? What what provides utility? What are communities excited about? And that is a lot of what all of us spoke about, about the emotion behind things and driving. Obviously, you should um, do your own research at all given times and make sure that you're investing wisely. Um, but um, I mentioned uh, Leo Colliard. He's one of the artists that we have featured in our space downstairs. Um, but Runestone is uh, amazing. I highly recommend looking into that. Um, but his um, latest one is Blocks. And uh, I was talking to him about it, and he was dropping me some alpha. So highly recommend checking out his uh, collection and maybe picking yourself up a block if you have a chance. Thank you, Nichelle. A little and alpha you. there. Um, I know this is a <laughs> Some people don't like this question, but you know what the question is. 
And I know, I know you're a big OG, so go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah, so what am I looking to buy? Um, what have you been collecting? Uh, both questions, you know, like, whatever. For sure, for sure. Um, I've been looking at probably sub 10K. I mean, on this, on this dip, I'm really looking for the assets that are very hard to get. And I'm looking for the people that own those assets that are looking to capitulate. So, you know, I would say ordinals are dead. Floor your sub 10K inscriptions. Uh, nobody wants them. Um, that sounds like Trevor. <laughs> that sounds just like Trevor. Nobody wants the sub 10K. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, flo floor your sub 10K. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. They're worthless. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. I just want to get your attention, bro. I love you, man. <laughs> I love the beard. Um, thanks for that. Uh, Mark, last but not least. So um, I've been working with Trevor on the, uh, the Pizza Pets airdrop. So some of you might have seen that. So I'm also part of a project called Megapont, and our artist has created all the art for that. Um, so shill our own bags, buy a Pizza Ninja or a Megapunk, and get the free airdrop. It's really fucking cool. You'll hear more about it on the main stage tomorrow. So excited to tell you all more about that. Fantastic, man. You like to keep it nice and you know, I love Don't these Don't like to too. waste time. Yeah, yeah, dude. I got to talk more because of you. Um, well, listen, that's, I'm Turan Troy Kalak, and I'm founder of Ordnots, sub, sub 8K anime collection on Ordinals, and I own Retordinals, and I'm just fucking a guy that's, uh, wait, that doesn't sound right. I am a guy. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Well, we're in Europe. Um, I'm just a guy that's building in the space, and I love to talk to people that are building too. Um, Thank our uh, lovely guests, Nick, Nichelle, Brandon, and Mark. And that's about it for us. Cheers.